So you have a whole body of literature um, it, it, about sexuality which is trying to establish that, that, that sexuality is the exercise of power of one person over another. You get it already in Sartre's Being and Nothingness um, uh, where he almost, it's almost by logic that, that uh, serious sexual desire for him ends up as sadomasochism because uh, you cannot extract from the other that gift of his freedom uh, which, which is what you're looking for because his freedom is his and not to be obtained by you. Uh, and therefore you can only do this by sort of tearing at his flesh, uh, uh, getting him to confess in the extremes of agony that he can't do it. You know, this kind of thing, you know, that's a very perverted vision of what sexual relations are, but you get uh, th that image used by Simone de Beauvoir and all kinds of uh, feminists to uh, essentially to delegitimize the idea that there is such a thing as, as love for the other sex. Well, there's a, there's a, I think it also masks a more fundamental problem that's really a biological problem. Like it's a misapprehension of a genuine problem. But part of what sex does is temporarily subordinate the individual to nature and the species. And so there is a domination there. You know, and and if, if, a, if a woman decides to have a child, then she is going to undergo a series of extraordinarily radical transformations. And she's also going to end up in a situation where in all likelihood, something else becomes fundamentally more important than her. And there, so there is a, there's a sub, it might be voluntary subjugation, but there's a subjugation to nature. And, and that's built into the fabric of existence. And I think it's very easy not to want to grapple with that because it's such a profound problem and then to to make that a secondary consequence of something like unbalanced power relationships between yes. the genders but of course uh, uh, traditional religion offers you salves for this the, the right of passage you know which which joins man to woman the right of passage which, which makes birth an experience of the whole community and death likewise uh, and um, you know, the, the sense also that in these great events, one is occupying a position in, the, uh, in a moral space that has been occupied by generations before one and so on. This normalizing of these huge transitions, I think, is something that, that we've always depended upon religion to provide. It's the sacralizing of it. Yes, the, and having taken that away or, or ignored it or, or tried to live without uh, exactly, without the idea of a sacrament, uh, and uh, we are actually at a loss when these great transitions occur. Well, and it, and it, it is because it is the case, in fact, that to to engage in the integration of sexuality with your individual life is a series of sacrifices. So, for example, if you get married, that's a sacrifice because it's a sacrifice of all other people, and so it's a sacrifice of that possibility. And then to have a child is the sacrifice of all the things that you could have done otherwise than having that child. And to, but to, 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 as you pointed out, to make that part of a broader tradition to say that, well, that is a sacrifice and there is a loss that goes along with that. But what you gain as a consequence is of, if, as of immeasurable significance in contrast to the loss. And one of the things that's really struck me in this lecture tour that I've been doing, so I've been in about a hundred cities, and one of the things that I've been talking to people about is, is meaning. And I suppose it's meaning in relationship to the transcendent and, and the necessity of meaning as an antidote to suffering and to malevolence. And the hypothesis is something like, well, meaning is to be found in responsibility. And, and this is a, it's a revelation to people because they haven't conceptualized it that way before. It's like meaning isn't, um, it, it isn't happiness and it isn't self-esteem and it isn't momentary pleasure isn't any of that, it's, it's, the, it's the bearing of a sacrificial burden and that that actually works to enrich and ennoble your life in ways that make the tragic element of it tolerable and to, and to keep you from bitterness. And so these things that are put forward as subjugation, like the subjugation of woman to the, to the catastrophe of birth, let's say, or even the, the indignity of, of patriarchal union, is all of a sudden something that you can take on as an aspirational goal rather than something that's a mere imposition on your on your moment-to-moment -moment freedom. It's a relief to people to hear that and to know it. Of course, no, I agree with that. Um, but there is also the, the sense that in the world in which we live, where obviously people have been detached to a great extent from the 
any continuous religious tradition, there still is a sense of loss, isn't there? Uh, people are, uh, they don't, they know that they, they're missing something, but don't know quite how to identify it. And that's one reason for thinking, for them thinking that it, it's been taken away, something's been stolen from them. And they look around at the people who are at ease in the world and successful and seem to be, uh, um, you know, on, on good terms with themselves and think of them as the ones who've done the stealing. Uh, and uh, that is a dangerous attitude. And I think it's, well, it's surely that is part of what erupts in all these uh, uh, strange academic disciplines like gender studies, which simply have as their goal the undermining of the existing order without anything positive to put in its place. And uh, I don't know, what th those, those academic studies recruit people all the time uh, from this fund of... Uh, of uh, of isolation, this, fun, mm. of, of, of this sense, the sense of, of loss without an ability to identify the thing that's been lost. That's the cult-like element of them because they do, I would say to some degree, prey on people whose interpersonal relationships have been irreparably damaged. Right.